Hello and welcome to the Farmhouse Heaven where we take DIY projects to the next level. My name is Marcos and today we're going to build a multicolored herringbone pattern countertop. So if you want to learn how, stick around and I'll show you. Enough talking, let's get building. I'm using some 3 quarter inch birch plywood as a support and I'll be using some 1x4s to create the pattern. Once you cut your countertop to size, you're going to want to divide it into 4 equal quadrants. I'm measuring a center line both horizontally and vertically. Next, I take a 1x4 to the miter table and cut a 45 degree miter. I use that first mitered 1x4 to start my pattern. I place the edge directly on the corner of the first quadrant, taking my time to line it up perfectly. Then I scrap a line from the bottom towards the outer edge. This lets me know exactly how much I need to cut off. Then I go back to the miter table and cut just outside the line I previously marked. I make sure to leave about an eighth of an inch in excess material and then come back to trim it later with my router. I trace the first 1x4 on the quadrant then move back to the miter table to cut the next piece to size. At the miter table, I use the previously mitered piece to trace and cut the remaining boards I need. I went back and forth from the miter table to the countertop placing each piece where I wanted, marking, cutting, and finally labeling each piece of the quadrant. I ended up needing a total of 6 pieces to complete my quadrant. I cut the first 5 from different 1x4s and the 6th piece from scrap material later, as this piece overlaps 2 quadrants. I take the time to dry fit everything in place and ensure my measurements are accurate. I also mark each board so I know exactly where it goes. Oh yeah, remember to check out our Facebook and Instagram page after viewing this video for some other cool DIY project ideas. Feel free to like and follow us too. Now that I have two quadrants complete, I cut my sixth piece and dry fit in place. Then I do some light sanding with 220 grit. Now it's time to have fun. With all my pieces in place, I identify which color I want to add to each board. There's really no magic here, just take your time and plan your design properly. I added color to some of the boards first, then I started staining each board individually. If you plan to stain with just one color, you can just glue and nail everything together first and then stain everything at once. I move on to my second stain color. But notice I only stain the top of the board. The bottoms will be glued and the sides won't be visible. Now it's time for glue up. I take a straight edge or a spacer and clamp it directly in the vertical center line. Then I start aligning my boards along each quadrant. Just make sure to take your time and align everything properly to minimize gaps. Plenty of wood glue and some inch and a quarter brat nails are sufficient to hold them in place. It kind of feels like putting a puzzle together, except in this puzzle, you are the one creating and cutting all the pieces. I take some painter's tape and add it along the edge of the countertop. Since I'm going to trim everything to size, I want to prevent tear out as much as possible. Since the bottom side of my countertop has the flattest board available, I flip it upside down on this workbench and grab a reverse flush trim router bit from my palm router. Then I go to town. I take light passes across the board to prevent tear outs. This can easily set you back a few days if you have to start from scratch all over again.
Now I take the time to add trim. I had previously rough cut these but now I'm measuring to cut them the size. Now it's a matter of adding wood glue using my specialty glue spreader and adding a few brad nails to hold everything in place. I decided to add clear caulking between all cracks and crevices. I let everything dry for a day then came back and added wood putty. This ensures the crack is filled from top to bottom. Then it was all a matter of adding my top clear coat, which I added using a paint sprayer and some sanding in between each coat. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Well, that's gonna be a wrap for this video. If you enjoy the content, make sure you hit that like button. If you feel like you learned something, please share it with others. And if you wanna continue taking your DIY skills to the next level, make sure you hit that subscribe button and that notification icon so you can be notified whenever we have new content. Till next time.